Good morning, church. I'm glad to be with you on this Sunrise Easter devotional. This morning, I want to share with you something that I have uncovered in my time in the Word over these past few weeks, and that is this. The hardest and the most beautiful words in all of the Bible are spoken in gardens. Let's go to the first garden. The first one is from Genesis chapters 1 through 3. Most of us know that story, but just for the sake of remembering it together, this is the place where God put Adam and Eve. Before there was sin, before there was brokenness, and before there was sickness and coronavirus and all of this other stuff, it was perfect. And that's where he placed Adam and Eve. And through a series of events, Adam and Eve chose to go their own direction and not to obey and listen to God, and it broke the whole system. The hardest words ever spoken was that you have broken my system, Adam and Eve. And because of this, everybody after you will be broken too. The earth will be broken. The universe, all of creation, is simply broken. He also gave them some words of comfort at the time that nobody really understood in that moment. Uh, but as scripture unfolds, we start to understand a little bit more. Jesus is prophesied in this moment where God says, I am going to send a boy and he's going to come from you, Eve. And that beautiful boy is going to fix all this mess. Now we know now because of what has happened through the cross and the empty tomb that we celebrate today, that that boy is Jesus. But they had to wait such a long time. But what's really neat about this is how hard words were spoken in the garden, but God picks it back up and said, see, I told you it was going to get better. I'm going to take care of you. And those words also happen in the garden. And they're spoken by a couple of angels as Jesus' friends and his disciples come up to take care of his body, which they thought was still dead. As they approached the tomb, there were a couple of angels there who rolled away the stone and said, See, he's not here. He has risen. And in that moment, the light of the world was proclaimed to be resurrected from the dead. You see, Jesus was actually buried in a garden. I don't know if many of you know that, but it comes from John chapter 19, verses 41 and 42, where it says this, At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in that garden a new tomb, in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. They were on a time crunch when Jesus came off the cross. That's why the trial was so fast. That's why uh, everything moved so quickly, is because they were trying to get him crucified before the holy days. Now, when you look at what just happened, God took something beautiful and people kind of messed it up. We messed it up. And he says, this is something hard that you need to hear. It's all broken now. But now look at what he just did in a garden when he said, he's not here, he's risen. Those are the most beautiful words that we could ever hear because that means that God really did send the boy, that God really does make good on his promises, and that Jesus is risen because God loves us. Now, the first Adam, uh, his name is Adam, but did you know that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Paul actually thinks of Jesus as Adam when he says this, the first man, Adam, became a living being. That's when God created him. But then Paul immediately says, the last Adam, a life-giving spirit. Jesus is not only in the garden at the beginning in Genesis, but he's also in the garden in the tomb when he rises. Adam is called Adam in the Old Testament, and Jesus is called the new Adam, the new creation. That's why Jesus was resurrected on the first day, because it's not just the first day. First day. If you go through Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then you go back to Sunday, it could also be the eighth day. Now, in the Jewish custom and in the Jewish understanding of things, eight means new creation. That's when the little boys were circumcised was on the eighth day. That's an incidentally why we have a baptismal font that has eight sides. Because when we are baptized into Christ, we are made a new creation. Eight means new. And eight means new creation that God brings about. And so when Jesus rises very early on the first day, you can also hear those words and say that he arrived and he rose very early on the eighth day, which means everything changes which means that in Christ, we are a new creation. In Christ, He has taken all of these other things, all of the old creation where God created in six days and rested on the seventh, He rewrites that whole thing with the resurrection. 
He takes all of that, bundles it up and says, I paid for that. I love you and I care for you. And I want you to know that I took your death and I give you victory. Now listen to this from 1 Corinthians chapter 15 as we close up. Paul says, where O death is your victory, where O death is your sting, the sting of death is sin and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Redeemer, welcome to Easter. Receive these words. He is risen. The light of the world, the light that no darkness shall overcome, is for you. Welcome to Easter.